It's one of the most infamous and gruesome cold cases of all time. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts and our special series on famous murderers. In this installment, we'll be counting down the most important facts about the murder of Elizabeth Short, an aspiring actress whose brutal death captured the morbid imaginations and obsessions of many across the country. The kind of person that perpetrated this crime was what I would call a sexual sadist. The crime became known as the Black Dahlia murder and is one of the most hotly debated conspiracies in Hollywood history. Fans, you all know Joe Gillis, the well-known screenwriter, uranium smuggler, and Black Dahlia suspect. <laughs> Number five. Her murder shocked the Los Angeles community. Great test, Elizabeth Short. The murder of Elizabeth Short is probably most remembered by criminologists for its shocking violence, as well as the frank and specific disposal of her body. Her corpse was discovered by a woman walking with her young child near a vacant lot on the morning of January 15, 1947. The nude body had been severed at the waist, and there was hardly any blood at the scene, implying Short had been murdered elsewhere, had her blood drained, and was then transported to the location. Finally, her body was posed, legs spread, arms bent over her head. Short's murder captured the Los Angeles community's attention almost immediately, with many of the city's local papers scrambling to piece together as much information as they could about this beautiful, mysterious young woman who, at 22 years old, started down her tragic road as the Black Dahlia. She's been played up as the hottest number since the atom bomb. Number four, there is a wealth of misinformation and fiction about Elizabeth Short. I'm told that I'm very photogenic. In the late 40s, newspapers were the source of news and had a vested interest in making the news titillating. The Los Angeles Examiner, owned by tabloid magnate William Randolph Hearst, was at the forefront of covering this story. The Bevo's painting Betty in a black dress like some actress in that Alan Ladd movie, Blue Dahlia. The press created the Black Dahlia moniker almost immediately following her death, a lazy reference to a popular movie of the time called The Blue Dahlia. Oh, brother. Overall, the press sensationalized the story by creating Short into some boulevard-prowling, loose-moraled woman of the night. Sadly, the inventions didn't end with the papers, as various books kept the rumor mill turning. Among them were allegations that Short was born a hermaphrodite, that she was a prostitute who worked with Marilyn Monroe as a double act, or even that important men had impregnated her and, as a result, had her murdered by the mob. Short's childhood friend Mary Pesios even authored a book in 1999 where she suggested that Orson Welles was the killer. None of these insinuations are true. People will think what I tell them to think. Number three, a man claiming to be Short's killer sent her belongings to the local news. The editor of the Los Angeles Herald Express received a phone call from a man claiming to be Elizabeth Short's killer less than 10 days after her body was found. The man promised to mail proof of his crime, and soon afterward, a package was intercepted by the Postal Service after being dropped into a public mailbox. The package contained, among other articles, Schwartz birth certificate, a Greyhound bus claim check, an address book with the name Mark Hansen on it, and a Western Union telegram signed Red. Red was the nickname of Robert Manley, a traveling salesman who dropped off Short to the last place she was seen, the Biltmore Hotel, on January 9, 1947. The package itself was soaked in gasoline, likely intended to remove fingerprints. The crime lab nevertheless managed to pull some prints, but to this day, the prints don't match any on file, leading investigators to surmise that this was the killer's one and only crime. Number two, the Black Dahlia files are still closed to the public. I was reading in your deal there, how they never caught that Black Dahlia killer. Black Dahlia? Yeah. No, they did Well, I was wondering how come. The murder of Elizabeth Short remains open and unsolved, pending new evidence, as one of history's most high-profile cold cases. This was not a rage kind of a murder. This was a planned, fantasized about event that this killer had rehearsed many, many times. The files of the Black Dahlia murder remain closed to the public, however, with only one Los Angeles homicide detective possessing access to the four filing cabinets in which the files are kept. This detective is known as the gatekeeper and they eventually pass along this charge to another single detective down the line. Of course, whenever there is secrecy involved, conspiracy theories abound. However, due to the age of this case, security levels should probably be considered moot, as everyone who knew Betty Short is probably dead. She herself would have turned 90 in 2014, making her murder one whose hidden secrets will most likely remain that way for the foreseeable future. Number one. A police error might have let the killer walk. I'm betting he's still alive. Uh, 
we all living in a trailer park or something. The police first encountered Leslie Dillon, an embalmer's assistant, after he began a correspondence about the case with police psychiatrist J. Paul DeRiver. Dillon had the skills required to drain blood from her body, lived within walking distance of the dumpster where Short's shoes and handbag were found, and could not be accounted for during the time of Short's murder. Suspecting Dillon was their man, police booked him and tried to get a confession. However, Dillon was held against his will and without access to an attorney, making it an illegal detention and effectively nullifying any headway the police had made in their investigation of him. Partially in response to this fiasco, a special investigative grand jury was impaneled, with the results of this inquiry revealing rampant corruption at the highest levels of the LAPD. Petty jealousies and alliances led to the department's inability to solve a rash of violent crimes against women, including the Black Dahlia murder. Someone asked me once if I thought Hollywood had murdered her. And uh, now after a number of years, I'd like to say yes, Hollywood did kill her. So, can you crack this cold case? And do you think more of the case files should be open to the public? For more Gatekeeper Top 10s and Bled Dry Top 5s, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I'm an actress. I'm gonna make it big. Everyone says so. You can expect to see me up on the silver screen one day.